What is minimum shift keyed modulation in digital communications? Well, let's look at a basic digital communication system. And here we have a digital data waveform, which takes values of either plus one or minus one, representing digital ones and zeros. And in a basic communication system, we take this waveform and we multiply it by a carrier waveform, which is a COS waveform at the carrier frequency. And here I've drawn a picture of what that looks like. It's a very high frequency COS wave. When we multiply these two together, the plus ones keep the same COS and the minus ones flip the phase. And we call this BPSK, binary phase shift keying. Okay, now what's a, a problem about this is that if we want to send data at a high rate, then we're switching this phase very quickly. So something that we can do is recognize that there's another waveform at the carrier frequency, which is orthogonal to the COS. And we do this in what's called 4PSK. We're using a quadrature waveform. So here we've got a COS carrier and a sine carrier. Here the sine is at the same frequency as the COS, but you can see it starts as a sine, starts going up from zero, whereas this one started at one. And we can put different data on each of these two waveforms. So something that we do then is we can take every odd data bit here and we can send it on the COS wave. We can multiply by the COS wave. So we, we say sending that on that carrier. And then we can take every even data bit and we can send it on the sine wave. And if we do it every odd one here, this will be one, then another one, then a minus one, then a one. And so we'd have this waveform here, one with another one, then a minus one, and then a one. So then we could have this waveform on the cos wave. And here I've drawn the waveform, which is for the even ones, which is negative one, 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 and one. And that's this waveform on the sine wave. We call this one here the in phase component, which we call AIT. And this one is the quadrature component. So we don't have BPSK anymore. Now we have what's called 4PSK because there's four symbols, four different phases from the combinations of these. Now the advantage is we're only switching them at half the rate. So we're only switching them now at 2T instead of 1T. And that means we've halved the bandwidth. So that's a really good thing to do. And that's what 4PSK is. So what is this MSK? What is minimum shift keying? Well, let's try and understand it by thinking about building an extra component into this diagram here, into this modulation format here. And what we do here in MSK, and I'll say why in a minute, but just for MSK, it's exactly the same as for PSK, except for two differences. There's an extra multiplier in here, and we do something different with this data stream on the in phase. So let's start by this multiplier. And here I'm showing what these two terms are. One extra multiplier on the in phase component and another one on the quadrature component. The in phase is cos matching the cos for the carrier and the quadrature is sine matching the sine. And you can see that this term is very similar to the carrier. The only difference is the frequency value. So this one is at FC, the carrier, which is very high frequency. This one here is at a frequency of one divided by four T, where capital T and capital T, don't forget, was the period of our data. And so this waveform here is a very low frequency compared to this one. It's actually even lower than the frequency of the data that we're putting in, because we're putting data in, in this quadrature format, every 2T. So the rate of data is one on 2T, and the frequency of this extra new carrier, very, very low frequency carrier, is actually half of that. And so we can actually think about this as being a version of pulse shaping. And we'll see why just in a minute. Notice that one is at cos and the other is at sine. And I said there were two things that were different between 4PSK and MSK, and the other one was this data sequence. And the other thing that happens in MSK is that this data sequence here is just shifted back by capital T. 
and we'll see why in a minute. So this means that instead of the one that I've drawn in pencil here, we will be having uh, the signal here coming as one and then this transition happens T earlier and then this transition back up happens T earlier and this is the waveform here with an offset of capital T and this gives us MSK not 4PSK but the structure is very similar and we're still using the um, cos and the sine in the high frequency carrier. Okay, so let's try and really understand this by looking at the waveforms. And I'm going to plot the waveform of this cos function here and the waveform of this sine function here. And that is what I've done here. So as we said, the frequency was 1 on 4t. It's a cos, so at time equals 0. It is for the cos wave, it starts at 1. And then it comes down, it has a period of 4t. So it comes down here, that's a quarter of the period, half the period, and the period is 4t. That's the cos. And this one here is the sine with exactly the same period. The sine starts at 0, goes up, down, and it's completed a period at 4t. So that's all. That's the only difference. It's a pulse shaping. We're going to be taking our data sequence, this one here. Um, notice that I've drawn this scale a bit expanded out because I want to be able to see these waveforms in more detail compared to these ones here. But we're just going to be multiplying this data here uh, by this waveform here, this carrier here, which is a low frequency carrier. Think of it as pulse shaping. And then we're going to multiply by this carrier here. So let, let me try to draw all of those things multiplied together for a special case where this FC is actually not very high. Let me draw it for a small value of FC so that we can see the functions here. So to help me to do that, the multiplying all of these, uh, let me draw the mirror image of this because we're going to, inside this envelope, we're going to have this carrier here. So I'm just going to draw that mirror image. So now we can see that this is forming an envelope within which this carrier is going to be uh, appearing when you multiply the two together. Of course, we also need to multiply it by the data, which is constant over that period. It's either plus one or minus one. So let's start by doing that. This is first over this period here up until capital T is a plus one. So we're going to draw this on here, which is the cos, and we're going to multiply by this one here, which is the sine. So let's start with the cos. This is plus one here. Uh, times the cos waveform. So it's exactly the multiplication of these two things. They're two coses, so they start at the top. And I'm going to draw it for a particular case here where this is the frequency of this carrier here. The low frequency here is this one, of course, and we're multiplying by one. So we get this waveform over the first period of t. So now let's consider the next time period up to 3t. If we look at our data, it is 1 all the way up to there. We look at this waveform, it is the negative part of the waveform. So now we're going to be seeing the inverse of this, of this waveform here. We're going to see that in this period here because the data is still 1, but now this function is inverting it because it's gone negative in this section between t and 3t. So let me draw that. This comes down here, then up then down, then up, then down, then up. Okay, and what about in the next time period between 3t and 5t? When we look up here, the data is giving us a negative. The cos waveform here is giving us a positive because that's the solid line from here. So the overall, when you multiply the negative by the positive, you're going to get another negative. So it's going to be the same as this function here. So now it's going to be down, up, down, up, down, up. So let me now do it for all of the rest of here and also for the sine wave, which is by multiplying this data sequence here waveform by the sine. Okay, and then of course they get added together and here we can see the resultant of adding them together. And this is where we start to really see this minimum shift keying. So one thing that you can see straight away is that this waveform here is very smooth. So compared to having BPSK or 4PSK, where we had sharp transitions at the data symbol timings, now we have very smooth transitions. 
Now, partly that is because we've got this sinusoidal pulse shaping, which certainly helps to smooth things out, but also it's because of the special way that it's constructed and with this time offset. It means that you never have a discontinuity in phase. Let's just consider this uh, original waveform here. If we had used a pulse shaping filter of a smooth cosine filter over the symbol timing, then you would get this shape here, and that's definitely smooth there, but then this cosine over here, and then followed by another cosine, would be giving us a discontinuity. So having a pulse shaping filter, and then there's more discontinuities that we see here. So part of the advantage you get is by having a pulse shaping filter, but the more advantage you get is by doing it in this special way with this special one on 4T and offsetting the in-phase data, which means that you not only can you get the smooth effect from a pulse shaping filter, but you remove all these discontinuities. So here's the final waveform. Now, why is it called minimum shift keying? I mean, we certainly see the advantage in terms of a bandwidth because we don't have these discontinuities. It's going to be much narrower band. The side lobes will be much more suppressed in the frequency domain, which is a great benefit of MSK. But why is it called minimum shift keying? Well, something that we can see here is by observing the phase at the symbol times. So let me just write down what those phases are. Here, it's at this symbol time, it's a cos wave, so that phase is zero phase. Here we have at that symbol time, capital T here, we're getting the negative sine wave. So that is a negative pi on two phase. At the next symbol time here, it is the negative of the cos wave. So that is a pi phase. Here we're getting again the minus pi on two phase. Here we've got again back to pi. Uh, this one here, we have a positive pi on two phase. Here we have back to pi. And then here we've got back to minus pi on two. So if you're thinking of it in terms of BPSK, the phase changes that happen at the symbol timings are cer certainly between, or let's say four PSK, they're certainly only the values that exist for four PSK. We have four values, four possible phases, zero, minus pi on two, pi, and pi on two. But we are choosing them in a special way so that there are no discontinuities. And in fact, you can see at most any change in phase is pi on two or minus pi on two. There's only a change of magnitude pi on two between any phase and the next phase. And that's why it's called minimum shift keying. You never make a phase transition of pi. So you never go from zero to pi, for example, or minus pi on two to pi on two. In MSK, you always have a minimum shift of only pi on two, either positive or negative, at each of the symbol timings. So that's why it's called minimum shift keying. Another thing that we can see by observing this here is that the frequency is actually different in each of these symbol timings. And in fact, there's only two values of frequency. Here we can see one where there's a higher frequency, the same higher frequency. This symbol timing here, there's a low frequency. High frequency, high frequency, low frequency, low frequency. And for this reason, this type of waveform is also called continuous phase frequency shift keying. I mean, it's definitely a continuous phase waveform, so it's sometimes called continuous phase modulation. In fact, it's a version of continuous phase modulation. There are other versions of continuous phase modulation, but MSK is one of them. But it's also a continuous phase frequency shift keyed, because you can see the data tells you which the waveform, which frequency to shift to. But again, it's done in a clever way, such that there are no phase transitions at anywhere in the waveform. And that's uh, why it's more general than just FSK. It's a continuous phase frequency shift keying. And to see that, you can rewrite the equation. You can take this AIT times cos, this cos times this, plus this AQT times sine times sine. You can write that equation. You can rearrange it with uh, the expressions of the rules of sines and coses. And you can see that you can rewrite it as a single sinusoid with a frequency, which is either FC plus one on 4T 
or FC minus one on 4T. And you can see that clearly by rearranging it. I won't do that here, but you can look that up and find that equation. So hopefully this video has given you more insights into minimum shift keying, the benefits of doing it, really very low uh, bandwidth, very low side lobes, uh, which is a great advantage compared to QPSK or BPSK. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the web page that you'll find in the show notes in the description below where you'll find a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.